Thank you, guys. It's a privilege to be here today. I wanted to start with a story. And the story is about a young girl who grew up in the projects right outside of Boston. She was on the bus with her teenage mom on her way to pick up government-issued food, and she stopped in front of Boston Children's and asked her mom what that place was. And the mom said, that's where really sick kids go to get well. Fast forward about eight years, that same girl found herself in the emergency room of Boston Children's. After a few months of trying to go from doctor to doctor to figure out a diagnosis due to some medical issues she was having, she went through a battery of tests and was then diagnosed with severe Crohn's disease that involved her liver. She continued to have battery of tests, procedures, surgeries, a year of placing NG tubes for overnight feeds, and even looked death in the eye due to an infection of her central line. That little girl became the clinical director of innovation at Boston Children's Hospital and was invited to speak with you guys today. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't look for her. I'll take the applause. That all works for me. Um, I speak about this really so you can have a bit of more background for me and understand why I have such a fire in my belly to make a difference in this space. And what better way to do this and marry this with another love of mine, which is technology. So I designed this talk to talk about some of the digital solutions that we have worked on at Boston Children's to hopefully inspire you to think differently about some ideas that you may have and maybe give you some nuggets that you can take home with today to use in your own practice or even in your own lives. Clearly, I'm a fan of Lego. You can't deny that is on point, right? <laughs> So I am helping with the Innovation Digital Health Accelerator. We have an internal accelerator at Boston Children's, and this is a list of our portfolio. When you think of digiceuticals, you think of things that have been clinically validated in the space. Anyone who works in pediatrics knows sometimes this is a bit of a challenge. So I figured I would give you a quick snapshot of some of the projects I worked on and also show you along the trajectory of where they are. So our Innovation Digital Health Accelerator really helps foster ideas to get to the bedside and through the, the roadmap of innovation. So you can see some of them are in the developmental stage, some of them are in the pilot and validation stage, some have been scaled and are looking for commercial use cases, and some have actually become companies. So when we take all of these, these ideas, we can actually put them in the verticals and see how they touch the patient experience and the patient journey. People have access to care, screening and early detection, patient experience, which we hear so much about, even digital therapeutics and how we use data. So I'm going to start by talking about a company that actually was spun out of Boston Children's called Mightier. Mightier is a scientifically proven bioresponsive digital therapy to treat ADHD through gaming. Uh, people in the LA area, there is a, a gaming hackathon coming up, and this is a perfect way to explain how gaming really can help kids with, their, with their, um, their behaviors. So what they do is, if you can see in this picture, the child is wearing a uh, wearable, and it tracks their heart rate, and they learn with the game skills to be able to relax. And it gets harder as they go based on their heart rate. So the skills that they're learning while playing this game, they can actually put this in real life in the real life world. And the cool thing about this game is it gets harder, as I, as I mentioned, but the parents are actually reporting back to us that they've seen a 75% improvement in behaviors of their children after they play this game for three months. So we're gamifying pediatrics, which is just so cool. We also have developed the early literacy screener. We worked with folks from the, the Florida Reading Center Normally, when you're, you are screening for things like dyslexia, the testing is just ridiculous that the kids have to go through. And we don't diagnose it really early in time or in, in life there. This, you can actually gamify all of that research, and the kids can have an interactive mobile-based game and get a diagnosis sooner. And what does that do? That allows people to have access to the resources much quicker 
giving that kid the ability to shine in school. I was going to say that the guy did look like Toucan Sam from the Fruit Loops box, but I, okay, I just did. All right. <laughs> So this is another example. This actually is probably one of my favorites. Not so much patient-focused, um, or patient-facing, I should say. This is Doc Health. This was created by a colleague of mine, Michael Doctor. Um, anyone who emails me know I'm the worst at email. My inbox is actually full right now, and I'm unable to send emails. This kind of eliminates that. This is a HIPAA-compliant to-do list for clinicians. So you can actually put a to-do list and share that to-do list with your team. You can delegate tasks. You can see who followed up on them without reading a trail of emails to say, did they call the CVS? Did they call the parent? You know, those simple requests that we see all the time, a, an insurance referral or maybe a prescription referral, we can make sure it gets done so things aren't falling through the cracks. The other cool thing about this platform is it actually goes into the medical record. So if I need to call a family, I can access the demographics right on my smartphone. I have five minutes of downtime. It's quick for me to just make those calls. So this is a, a great solution and really has allowed us to become more efficient in our workspace. Luminopia is a company that wasn't spun out of Children's, but we're actually in the process of validating their product. Now, this is probably the only, I do VR all the time, but this is probably the only VR thing I'm speaking about today in my talk. What they did is they kind of hacked a headset to help kids with lazy eye. So you can see on this picture here, typically kids are patched when they have lazy eye. What they did is they allow the strong eye, the lens of the strong eye, to be adjusted so that lazy eye can get stronger. While the patient is watching about an hour worth of 2D videos in a headset, I think it's a better solution than, than the, the patch, for sure. And the kids are really responding well to this, and they're following through. Um, so this is being validated currently at Boston Children's. This is another uh, example of how you can streamline the process using some solutions that we're used to using anyway. So Medumo is something that was taken from our texting system that we had when people came into Children's and they, they were discharged. We would text them to make sure that things were going well. It was a study that came out of Boston Children's with something called Disco. Well, that was purchased, and this company actually took that platform and made it even more robust. So an example of how this works, and I'll step back and say this we're using with our adolescent patients. So again, we're, we have all sorts of age groups that we have to work with when we deal with, with pediatrics. But adolescents, of course, are texting all the time, so you might as well build something specifically for them. So this um, really improves the end-to-end -the -end -in adherence. So if we go to the doctor, and the doctor decides that they want to do, say, a colonoscopy, we typically get all this paperwork handed to us. This is who you call to schedule it. This is what a colonoscopy is. Here is your prep. Good luck, and hopefully you do all those things. Sometimes we forget. Frankly, I don't know where papers are either in my world. This here is a godsend when it comes to that. So now, if I don't respond or call someone, the next day I'm getting a text. Your doctor would like you to schedule a colonoscopy. I might even get some, some dates thrown out at me that I can collect, just you know, respond right back by a text messaging if that works. So then it goes one step farther to give me information about the procedure itself and about the prep. You think it would stop there, but it has real-time information sent to me when that prep starts. So if I can't eat or drink anything after midnight, I'm going to get a text at that time to say stop eating or drinking. If I need to start taking Ducalax or whatnot for a colon prep, it's going to tell me at that time that I need to start taking my medication. And what this has shown, we're using this in our gastroenterology procedure unit at Boston Children's, and what this has been shown is that there's less um, folks that have to be rescheduled because of a poor prep. And it's also giving patients a lot more information in the nick of time. If you had the luxury of being at this conference last year, you were probably introduced to Health Voyager. <laughs> this was an idea that my colleague Michael Doctor and I had to educate patients. And it, truthfully, it started to educate patients about our procedure unit. We wanted to create a 360 tour of our procedure unit. Well, that idea pivoted and we came up with Health Voyager. We work with a company called Click Health out of, out of um, 
Canada. We have a little video here. And basically what happens when a child comes in for a gastroenterology procedure, they have their procedure and then the findings can be easily put into a, an app, a smartphone app, so the patients actually can see this. Anyone who's tried to explain findings of a colonoscopy to a parent knows the challenges in this space. We've created a really easy to use interface for our doctors, so it doesn't really add that much time to the, to the end. Um, everything, ha when they drag and drop it, you'll see Mike do in a sec, that's my colleague Mike. Help Voyager. This is an easy drag and drop interface for the physicians to be able to identify where there might be disease in the colon. So Crohn's ulcerative colitis can easily be identified. Then a QR code is created and it can populate on a smartphone. We give kids this and we also give them the foldable VR glasses to wear and they are flying through their own colon. Sounds probably not so cool after lunch, I apologize for that. <laughs> But these are the glasses that we have, and there she is learning about her disease and her diagnosis by making it fun and interactive. And we're currently studying this to see if we're really making an impact in this space. We did get some feedback from families that they felt kind of left out of the experience, so we also have an iPad version of this now as well. So this is a happy kid after a colonoscopy, who knows? CareMap is another app that, that was created, and this was really created for families with kids with complex needs. And it leverages the uh, care, uh, Apple's Care Kit to allow parents to enter data into a um, dashboard, if you will, keep that data and be able to access that data in a very digestible format. So here we have My Health for Liam. And Liam has had a hard time sleeping after starting a medication. We can actually see this because it starts to create graphs and algorithms that are easily digestible that families can share with their providers. So this has been a real, this is actually available in the App Store now if you guys wanted to download. I'm not pushing it because it isn't a children's thing, but if you wanted to. <laughs> but this has really been incredibly helpful for this, this population because if you think of these complex care kids, they have multiple providers across the hospital, sometimes even at, at our satellite uh, places. So this has been really helpful. Mark is actually an idea that came out of my brain. Um, I shared with you some of my experiences. And also, this came up because thinking about the children's population, 60% of our patients are actually discharged with medical equipment. So, Truth be told, I took a weekend and learned how to use the AR kit, so I was being totally geeky and I wanted to build something. Um, so that, that's really how this happened, and I thought, why not do this with medical equipment? So patients can see what the medical equipment looks like in their house prior to getting it delivered. Patients can hear what it sounds like. An oxygen compressor is a pretty loud piece of equipment in a house if you're not used to that sound. And also be able to identify the space requirements for these. So anytime I do any project, I ask for feedback. I go to the patients and I go to the families. Those are my, those are my first go-tos. And the feedback we got from them is they really wanted a platform. They love the AR component, but they also wanted a platform that they can actually manage the equipment. They can manage some of the supplies that, that went with this. So we added that into this app, which is also currently available in the App Store. And we're testing it right now with our PM group. So we're, we're hoping that this is really gonna streamline how people order their supplies, reorder their supplies, et cetera. They spend hours going to different, different uh, places to try to order these. We are also really interested in social robotics at Children's. We use social robotics to help kids that have a fear of hospitals, that have a fear of procedures. So if they're an inpatient, we can actually introduce a social robotic to make them more comfortable. I do have a little video to show you about Huggable, the social robot that We've we worked on with Huggable MIT. here in the pediatric hospital setting uh, in hopes of finding ways that we can use social robots to help reduce children's anxiety, pain, and other distress while they're in the hospital setting. There you go. Is that better? Huggable is able to provide a novel interaction for kids. 
Some kids really find it easier to interact with a, a sort of lovable stuffed animal creature than with, you know, scary doctors and nurses that are coming in their rooms and doing all of these things. Kids really seemed to be able to relax and to connect with the bear. We saw them feel more positive after this interaction. So again, this was work with the personal robotics group out of MIT, as well as Northeastern University in Boston and the Children's Hospital Simulation Program. I keep this picture up there because in addition to having a social robot, there's a piece of it that's missing, right? And that's the human component to it. We have child life specialists actually running this social robot from outside the patient's rooms. We're using cameras so we can see how patients are interacting with this and adjust accordingly. So we're playing games with the child. We can say that Kate's wearing Dodger's blue. Just bringing it up again. Dodger's blue <laughs> blazer. This is something that did not come out of Boston Children's, but I said I was going to share with you some nuggets to help you care for some pediatrics patients. This actually, another uh, child life uh, department out of Phoenix Children's developed this. And this is a, an app that allows you to take the medical jargon we use daily and put it in kids' terminology. Something as simple as an IV, you hear this all the time, a kid doesn't understand what that is. So this, will, this is a really great app. It's available in the App Store. Again, I'm pushing another product, which is good. Um, so it's available in the App Store. It's available for iPad as well as your iPhone. And I think it's in the Google Store as well. And it has a glossary of the most common terms that people, people um, talk about. And it also allows you to draw, so you can do some an anatomical drawings as well. And it also includes pictures of calming procedures, something like a, an MRI. In addition to the pictures in the MRI space, it added sound. If anyone's had an MRI, they know how loud that can be. And if you think about it from a kid's perspective, it's pretty scary in there. And mom's not in there with them, right? So I, I, I'm a huge fan of this. And the one very cool thing about this, with one button, it goes over to Spanish. So I think a lot of people are very excited about this, this next topic, which is voice. I'm totally stoked about voice. I wake up to Alexa every morning. I also snooze Alexa. My, my neighbors think I live with someone named Susan because she says snoozing. Yeah. That's a true story. But if you think about the trajectory of some of these cool things that, that we as patients have access to, back in 2000, we thought the portal was cool. We could get our blood results on a patient portal. Then in 2010, mobile apps are cool. And now 2020, we're going to really see a huge, huge push in voice. Now, it would make sense to me it's 2020. I would probably go with more of a visual thing just because. So Boston Children's Hospital was the first hospital to create a skill for Alexa. And that skill was KidsMD. And that was available for parents to be able to access just common questions that they may have. Maybe their child had a fever. They wanted to learn more about a fever, fever, and this would give them information, evidence-based dosing um, based on the child's weight and their age. The Flu Doctor is also another uh, spin-out of Children's. We partnered with Seattle Children's, and this is also common questions about the flu. Also, information about where it is. Is the flu near you? And where you can get a flu shot if that was something that you were looking for in your area. Now, I gave you some insight of my background. I remember being post-op once and being in bed and dropping the nurse call button and not being able to get it. And I felt completely crippled. And someone came very quickly, but for me, it felt like a very long time. I was a teenager. I didn't know. My parents weren't there at the time. This is how we envision voice changing the future of healthcare. Imagine being able to use your voice to summon a nurse, to order your meals, to change the temperature, put the lights on. And as voice becomes HIPAA compliant, even collect information about your, your pain scores, for instance. And then as we push forward with voice, if we really peel it back a bit, we actually can take some of that, that metadata that's being created with this, and we can look at, how, at empathy, really, based on people's tone. This is information that can change how we practice medicine, which is really exciting. You guys have skills. You actually can make a skill today. 
Again, I said I was gonna share with you some nuggets. This is actually one of my favorite nuggets to share with folks. Amazon has created blueprints. Blueprints is the easiest thing to use to create a skill. It's template-based, you can fill in the blanks, and you can create a skill on the fly. So how can you use that in the healthcare space? So again, you can customize your questions. Um, if you, say, wanted to gamify a diagnosis like asthma, you could actually create a game. And you can publish it to just your area if you wanted to use it internally in your home. Or you can publish it to the skill store, which is pretty cool. This is actually how I used it with a friend of mine. They have a son with complex needs. His name is Billy, obviously. And I took a, I repurposed, I talk about repurposing a lot, I repurposed one of the templates which was meant for babysitting and made it specifically for Billy's caregivers. He has multiple people coming in daily. Some of them know him, some of them don't. He has grandparents, things change. Mom had a book probably about this big that people would have to flip through to find answers to common questions. Simple things like where maybe a supply was, where, you know, maybe his morning routine, afternoon routine. You can add things like allergies to this and even be able to connect with the families. I'm a huge fan of this. I say take this nugget. You can also have fun with this and, you know, create skills based on your friends. Now, obviously, I love Lego. Um, <laughs> Lego just came out. This is so convenient because they just came out with this Walt Disney um, Lego kit, which I'm very excited about, and I can't wait to hear what Walt Disney has to say. Um, mainly because, again, we talk about repurposing, and I'm always thinking of how I can use some of the things that I can see in the healthcare space. This is something that I dream of for our patient population, to use a wearable that has all that information so you can just check in with just a, just a quick, you know, switch of the wrist and you're checked in. Maybe that, that wristband would have your most recent medical history on there, maybe a most recent uh, med rec on there that people could, they could just populate a smartphone. I don't know what they're talking about, so I hope I'm not ruining anything there. It's a dream of mine. So again, I say, steal like an artist. This is not a novel approach to some of the things that we're doing. Every person in this room is repurposing or thinking about repurposing how we use some of the technologies that have been placed before us. Who would ever think we'd be using VR in healthcare? This is such an exciting time, and we also have access to a lot of tools to help us get our ideas really to the bedside much quicker, particularly when it comes to technology. And again, this is not novel. Apple has literally stolen the playbook for, from the Ritz-Carlton for their stores. That is 100% based on the practices of the Ritz-Carlton, your experience at an Apple store. When I was younger, I used to get up early on Sundays to watch um, the Jetsons. And um, the Jetsons went off the air. First of all, it was the first color cartoon, which is just crazy. But it also went off the air in 1965. In 1965, they already knew about telehealth. They were, they were inspiring us about telehealth. But it makes, makes me laugh about this picture is the doctor actually has, he's covering his face and it's a screen, but that's beside the point. Elon Musk is getting credit for the Hyperloop. I mean, sorry, Elon, George was in the Hyperloop way before you were boring. <laughs> and imagine my excitement when my doctor told me as a teenager that I would have to swallow a camera that would look at my insides. So again, getting some, some uh, influence from some of the things that we're seeing daily and how can we repurpose things that we are coming in contact with. When you're talking about technology, one size actually doesn't fit all. Not everyone does well with these types of technologies, and we have to think about that when we're talking about solutions or building solutions. But what I will say is if you are inspired and you are interested in building out a solution, Keep that, that fire going in your belly as well. Because if you don't, you might see other people doing it down the line, which is not so cool. And then the last thing to end with is remember that technology is a companion. It is a companion, but should never be a replacement for that person-to-person -person touch. Thank you. <laughs>